Want to speak real Cantonese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at CantoneseClass101.com. Welcome to CantoneseClass101.com's Sanfen Zhong Guangdong Hua, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Cantonese. 你好，我系 Olivia， 好高兴同大家见面。Hi, I'm Olivia. Nice to meet you. In this series, we're going to learn basic Cantonese expressions. It's super easy, and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Cantonese. There are a few different ways to say it, depending on how many people you are talking to. Let's first see how Cantonese speakers introduce themselves to a single person. 你好，我系 Olivia， 好高兴认识你。Hi, I'm Olivia. Nice to meet you. 你好，我系 Olivia， 好高兴认识你。Start by saying 你好，我系 ，then say your name。你好，我系 Olivia。Finally, say 好高兴认识你。你好，我系 Olivia。好高兴认识你。Good job. Now let's see the same sentence when talking to more than one person. 你好，我系 Olivia。好高兴认识你哋。Hi, I'm Olivia. Nice to meet you all. 你好，我系 Olivia。好高兴认识你哋。So, what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a closer look at these together. 你好，我系 Olivia. Has not been changed. 你好，我系 stands in both case for Hi, I am. Finally, pay attention to the ending. We went from 你 to 你哋 What has changed is the word for you in Cantonese. The word for you is different if it is singular or plural. 你 is singular, and 你哋 is plural. One more time, to introduce yourself to one person in Cantonese is 你好，我系 Olivia， 好高兴认识你。To introduce yourself to more than one person is 你好，我系 Olivia， 好高兴认识你哋。Now it's time for Olivia's insights. When you introduce yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands. Always introduce yourself to the higher-ranking persons before those of lower rank. In most cases, the person of the highest ranking will be the most elder person. If you use the correct sentence with Cantonese speakers, they are definitely going to be impressed. In the last lesson, we learned how to introduce ourselves in Cantonese. Today, we are going to learn how to use good manners as we thank others. 准备好没 Are you ready? 咁就開始啦。Let's start. There are basically two different ways to thank someone. When thanking someone for a service or assistance, we say 唔該，唔該，唔該 means thank you. When saying thank you very much, you just need to add 曬，唔該曬，唔該曬。曬 means entirely. So, 唔该晒 is like saying thank you very much. Another way to thank someone in Cantonese is 多谢 It is used when receiving a gift or money. 多谢 And again, to say thank you very much, just add 晒多谢晒多谢晒 Let's break this phrase down. 多 is many, and 谢 is thanks. Sai means entirely. Thank you very much. 多谢晒 How do you answer when you are thanked? It's easy. Just say, 唔使客气唔使客气唔使客气 Literally means no need to be polite, but it is the equivalent of you are welcome. So when someone says 唔该 or 多谢 to you. You can simply reply with 唔使客气 Now it's time for Olivia's insights. If you're not sure about whether to use 唔该 or 多谢 remember that 多谢 expresses a deeper appreciation of personal kindness and is used in most formal situations. In the last lesson, we learned how to show gratitude by saying 唔该 or 多谢 
In this lesson, we'll learn some of the most common greetings used in Hong Kong. 準備好未 Are you ready? 咁就開始啦 Let's start. The most common informal greeting is hello, hello. Just as you can guess, hello is just hello with the Cantonese pronunciation. We use it when meeting someone, just like in English. But be careful, this is very casual, so don't use it for business meetings. And now let's discuss a more formal way to greet people. The one you're probably used to hearing is 你好，你好。Literally, 你好 means you are well. However, we may also interpret it as hello. We use 你好 when meeting someone for the first time or for higher-ranking people, such as the elderly. When it's time to leave, we say bye bye for informal situations. And you are right; it's just like the English bye bye with a Cantonese pronunciation. Bye bye. And in formal situations, use 再见。再见，再见 means goodbye. Finally, in Cantonese, we have an expression meaning "see you soon" that can be considered both formal and informal. 下次见，下次见。Now you can greet people in many different ways in Cantonese. Let's go over them again. When meeting your friends or family, say hello. When leaving in an informal situation. Say bye bye when meeting older people or someone you don't know. 你好 When leaving in a formal situation, 再见 And to say see you soon in a way that's formal and informal, say 下次见 It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Olivia's insights. In formal situations, Cantonese speakers commonly greet each other by shaking hands. But if we meet someone we're very close with, we pat each other on the arm or on the back. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Cantonese. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we're going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Cantonese, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Here's how to say it: 你识唔识讲英文？你识。嗯，识讲英文。Let's break it down. In the last lesson, we mentioned that 你 means you. 识唔识 is a form used to introduce the question using the verb to know. It literally means no, don't know. But this is how we form the question: Do you know how to? Then we have the verb to speak, 讲 followed by 英文 which means English. Literally, it means You know or not know English? 你识唔识讲英文 To learn more about forming Cantonese questions, please look at our Absolute Beginner series on CantoneseClass101.com. You can find very detailed grammar lessons and resources there. To make this sentence more polite, we just need to add "excuse me" 唔好意思 in the front. Everything else stays the same. 唔好意思，你识唔识讲英文？嗯，好。意思，你识唔识讲英文 ？The responses you will receive could be one of these three: 识 ，yes； 识，少少 ，a little； 少少，唔识 ，no； 唔识。Since this last one is a negative statement. We see the negative word "m"、mm, before the verb to know "sick." "M、mm, sick." Did you notice that it's the same word used in "sick m sick"? We'll talk more about it in a future lesson. Now it's time for Olivia's insights. For those of you who are not only English speakers, you can obviously use this question with any language you need. Many people in Hong Kong study other languages, so maybe you will get lucky. Just substitute "ying man" with. 日文 for Japanese, 西班牙文 for Spanish, 德文 for German, 意大利文 for Italian. In this lesson, we mentioned the expression 唔好意思 but did you know that this could also be used as an apology? In the next lesson, we will learn this and other ways to apologize in Cantonese. It's never too late to show your good manners. 
I'll see you in our next Sanfengzhong Guangdonghua lesson. Hatsiki. Want more Cantonese videos like this? Subscribe to our channel. Neho, no hi Olivia. Hi everybody, I'm Olivia. Welcome to Cantonese Class 101.com's Sanfengzhong Guangdonghua, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Cantonese. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase Excuse me, do you speak English? We mentioned the word which means excuse me. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use and other words when apologizing in Cantonese. We should use in formal situations, such as when we're talking to or asking a stranger for help. For example, Excuse me, where is the entrance? 唔好意思,你踩住我个袋 Excuse me, you're stepping on my bag. Sometimes we also hear people say 唔该 As mentioned in lesson 2, 唔该 means thank you, but it also means excuse me as used to draw somebody's attention. It is commonly used when ordering food or pushing your way through a crowd. We can use this phrase in both formal and informal speech. Excuse me, a cup of hot milk tea, please. Excuse me, please let me through. But unlike we cannot use when apologizing. So when you do something bad, remember to put on that sorry face and use Sorry, I'm late again. can be used for either excuse me or I'm sorry. But if you really want to apologize for something, it might be better to use a different phrase. That phrase is 对唔住. It means I am sorry. 对唔住. For example, 对唔住,我打烂了你部电脑. Sorry, I broke your computer. Now it's time for Olivier's insights. If you accidentally bump into someone in Hong Kong, you can say 唔好意思, excuse me. Or 对唔住, I'm sorry, but never 唔该. In the last lesson, we learned some words used when apologizing in Cantonese, including 唔好意思 and 对唔住. In this lesson, we're going to learn numbers in Cantonese. Yes, numbers. 数字, from 1 to 10. And you are going to learn them in only 3 minutes. 三分钟. Are you ready? Let's start. Yat. Yat, ye, ye, sam, sam, say, say, mm, mm, lo, lo, chat, chat, bat, bat, gao. 九,十,十 Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. 一,二,三,四,五,六,七 八九十 Great job! What is before yat? Do you know? It's leng. Zero. Leng. You don't have any more excuses. You can give your friends your cell phone number in Cantonese. Let's try together. We'll use the phrase 我电话号码是 which means my phone number is 我电 can you read it by yourself? 9584-9723 Perfect! Now it's time for Olivier's insights. When we go shopping at the markets in Hong Kong, sometimes we can bargain on the price. 
so learn your numbers well to get a better deal. In the last lesson, we learned the numbers from 1 to 10. Have you forgotten? Here, I'll tell you again. Yat, yi, sam, se, m, lo, chat, ba, gao, sa. And now let's continue from 11. Sub yat, sub yat, sub yi, sub yi, sub sam, sub sam, sub say, sub say, sub m, sub m, sub lo, sub lo, sub chat, sub chat. Sub bat, sub bat, sub gao, sub gao. And finally, we have yi sub, yi sub. Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Sub yat, sub yi, sub sam, sub say. Sub m, sub lo, sub chat, sub ba, sub gao, yi sub. These numbers are easy to remember. They always start with sub or ten. Then just say the extra number after it. Simple math. Counting from thirty to one hundred is super easy. Now I'll give you the tens. Sam sub. Sam sub, say sub, say sub, m sub, m sub, lo sub, lo sub, chat sub, chat sub, ba sub, ba sub, gao sub, gao sub, yat ba, yat ba. These numbers are incredibly easy to remember, don't you think so? The last thing to learn today is how to form compound numbers over twenty. This is also super easy. Take the tens and simply add the numbers you learned in the previous lesson. Let's try it out. How would you say fifty-six in Cantonese? Let's take it step by step. Fifty is m sa, and then add six lo. M sa lo is done. Isn't that easy? Let's make another number. For instance, ninety-eight. Take ninety, gao sub, and add eight, ba, gao sub ba. Now it's time for Olivier's insights. For numbers between twenty-one and twenty-nine, you might hear people saying ya as twenty instead of yi sub. Both can be used in spoken Cantonese. For example, ya yat, yi sub yat, twenty-one. Ya chat, yi sub chat, twenty-seven. After only two lessons, you are now able to count to one hundred in Cantonese. In the next lesson, we're going to put your number knowledge to use. In the last lesson, we learned how to count in Cantonese. I hope you spend some time practicing the numbers because they will come in handy today. We're going to learn how to go shopping in Hong Kong. Before we go, you need to know how to say how much is it. Gai ti na. Are you ready to go shopping in Hong Kong? Let's go. You see something you like and want to ask the shopkeeper how much it costs. The first thing to say is, "Um gai." Do you remember what that means? Excuse me. Um gai gai ti na. Um gai gai ti na. If we want to be more specific and ask how much is this. First, we need to know the correct measure word for the object. We'll learn about that in the next lesson. For now, let's use the most common one, "go." So in the sentence, we'll say, "yi go as this," followed by how much. Um, gai, yi go gai qi na. Um, gai, yi go gai qi na. Excuse me, how much is this? And to ask, excuse me, how much is that? 
Again, we'll use the most common measure word ga. So to say that, it'll be ga ga. 唔该，嗰个几钱啊？唔该，嗰个几钱啊？ At this point, the shopkeeper will answer directly with the price, followed by "mun," the slang term for the Hong Kong dollar. For example, "sam sap gao mun." What number is "sam sap gao"? I'm not telling you. Okay, okay, it's thirty-nine. It costs thirty-nine Hong Kong dollars. Now it's time for Olivia's insights. It's quite common to bargain in markets. Other than saying the specific price you want. You can also just ask for a cheaper price by saying "pandila," "pandila." In small boutiques or shops, you can ask, "Are there any discounts?" by saying "yao mo zi a," "yao mo zi a." In this lesson, we learned the generic measure word "go." In the next lesson, we'll learn more about what these measure words are and how to use them. I'll be waiting for you in our next 三分钟广东话 lesson. 下次见。